I have always thought the base game graphics for The Sims is kind of like bleh. The coloring specifically, it's giving drab, it's giving gray. You go girl, give us absolutely nothing. I much prefer my game to look like this. She's saturated, she's vibrant. I can actually see sh Sometimes I'm feeling like kind of melancholy or like reminiscent or something. So I want more of like a drabber vibe, sort of. I don't know, I think this preset's still really pretty, but you know, it's a different kind of vibe. Sometimes I miss the Twilight era of the 2010s when our biggest concern was figuring out if you were Team Edward or Team Jacob. So I made my game look like it came straight out of Forks, Washington. All of these recoloring and other effects I'm cycling through right now are all from Reshade. Some people get scared to use Reshade because the installation and the menus and everything you can choose from can be kind of intimidating, but I'm gonna hold your hand and I'm gonna show you how to do this. It is a whole lot simpler than you think, I promise. And if you installed Reshade when Sims was only supporting DX9, but now you wanna upgrade to use Reshade with DX11, since we officially have that support now, I will show you how to do that as well. So first things first, you need to download Reshade. I will put the link to the website in the description, but you're gonna scroll down until you see download Reshade 6.3.3. That is the current version we are on as of November, 2024. This version should be okay for most people, but if you want to use mods like Clean UI or anything like that, you will need this version instead with full add-on support. Please Please note, however, the full add-on support version is only supposed to be used for single player games. So if you wanna put on shaders in Fortnite, you cannot use this one because it might get you banned if you use it in multiplayer games. The standard version, however, you can use in any game whatsoever, Sims, Fortnite, Call of Duty, whatever. After you've downloaded Reshade, go ahead and open that up and we will go through the setup process. The first screen you'll see is a list of games that are installed on your PC. It probably won't show all of them and it usually does not show The Sims 4. So what we have to do is we have to go to browse and find it on our PC. So I have my game installed on an internal SSD drive. So I'm gonna go to that and then mine is located in EA Games, The Sims 4. I scroll down to the game folder, double click in bin, and then I have these options here and these are the actual games because those are the application files. This game path is probably not the same as yours because again, it's on an internal SSD drive and not my actual PC. Here is the game path for most people if you have installed it the usual way onto your PC. But once you have found it, you should have these three applications here. So before we continue with the application, we're gonna go ahead and do something here so we don't have to come back and do it. What I want you to do is right click and then go to new and make a new folder. And then you need to rename that folder reshade-presets, exactly like this one here. Here. Just trust we're gonna use it later and this just makes it simpler to do it right now. So after you've made that presets folder, then we need to choose which version of The Sims we're going to install our reshade for. If you're gonna use DX11, you need to choose this application here. However, if you're gonna keep using DX9, you need to use this one here that has DX9 in the title. I am using DX11, so I'm going to click that and then click open. You should see it populate here in this little bar. And once you have that, you can click next. Here you need to select the DirectX version you are using. So again, if you're using DX11, you're going to choose this one here. If you chose DX9 on that previous option, you're going to choose DX9. Again, I have DX11, so I'm going to leave that clicked and click on next. So this screen is where people get really overwhelmed and confused because it lists every single reshade effect you can install. Now, if you want to, you could install every single one of these if you want. If you have like a hella alien spaceship PC and it can run a ton of stuff, go ahead and do it. I have a decent PC, but I can absolutely not support all of those things. So I will not be doing that. Honestly, for the Sims 4 shaders, you don't need all of these things. For most of the Sims 4 shaders, you only need a few of them. Standard effects, you can't even unclick that one. So you definitely need this one. I would go ahead and install the sweet effects package and then scroll down and also go ahead and install the Quint by Marty McFly package. If you do have a decent PC, I would also go ahead and download legacy effects. And then if you scroll down, you should see one that says something like G shader. Here we go, G shade shaders. Go ahead and do that because it has some of the G shade ones in there. But bare minimum, do the sweet effects and the quint ones. Once you have those selected, go ahead and click next. 
it will give you this little loading screen and then you should get a screen that says successfully installed reshade. Yay. Then we just click the finish button. Next thing we want to do is we want to go back to that place where we installed that reshade preset folder. If you installed reshade correctly, you should see some new files down here that say things like reshade, uh, reshade presets, things like that. I've had reshade installed on this PC before, so I do have a few extra ones. So don't worry if you don't have all of these, you should have at least like a reshade one and then you you should also have a new folder that, sh that says reshade shaders. If you're seeing those things, then reshade was installed correctly, but don't close out of this because we are going to use this reshade presets. So the preset folder is where you are going to put all of your reshade presets that you might want to use in game. You can see here, I already have a bunch of them. And honestly, you can search them by going to Pinterest. You can go to Tumblr. Lots of people have them on their Patreon. Just by searching Sims 4 reshade presets on Pinterest, I have all of these hidden for it. Just be careful though and make sure that you are downloading reshade presets and not G shade ones. I actually did find a few new presets that I wanted to install. So I went ahead and downloaded those. Once you have downloaded those, they should show up as a configuration setting type of file and likely have this little cog on it. So what we are going to do is we are going to drag those presets into that reshade presets folder that we made. Oh, and I actually already have uh, one of those. <laughs> and obviously you should see them them in that folder once you have dragged them in there. Once you've done that, go ahead and load up your Sims 4 game. And when you get to the loading screen, you should see this little pop up here that says uh, reshade is now installed successfully. You're probably not going to get this arrow here. FYI, I uninstalled my reshade and then reinstalled it for this. So um, I have to go back and add on some extra things that I had. So don't worry about that. You shouldn't have it. it tells you you can press the home button to go through a tutorial. And when you do that, you'll get this little menu here. If this is text is too small for you and it is for me because I have terrible eyesight. You can press the control button and then um, scroll your mouse wheel and it'll make it bigger. Like I'm telling you y'all, I can't see shit because my contact prescription is very, very um, outdated right now. But anyway, you can either skip the tutorial or you can continue on through it if you want. If you skip the tutorial or after you're done with it, you should still see this menu here. So the home screen lists all of the effects that you have installed. So these are all the effects that can be used in your presets essentially. So how do you actually get your presets in the game and how do you actually use them? You should have this little bar here. It might not say reshed preset. I don't really know what yours is going to say, but anyway, click in there. And now you want to navigate to again, where you installed that reshade preset folder. So once you've done that, go ahead and click on reshade presets and then click select. So once you have found yours, double click on the reshade preset folder to open it. And then here you should see all of your presets you have in there. And all you have to do is just highlight one of those, click select, and then it automatically puts that effect into place. On the home menu, you'll see check marks next to the effects it's actually using from Reshade. What you also want to do is you also want to go to settings and we're going to put in some keyboard shortcuts here. So it tells you here that home is your overlay key. So by pressing the home button, that's how you get the Reshade menu out of the way. Pressing it again brings it back up. However, if you don't want this to be the home key or or you don't have a home key on your keyboard because you're using a laptop or whatever, you can change this. All you have to do is click in there, um, backspace to delete the home and then input whatever you want. So let's say I want it to be uh, shift and P. I press those buttons and then shift and P shows up in there. So that means when I press shift P, this menu is gonna toggle open and closed. I'm gonna change this back to the home button though because I like using the home button. I would also encourage you to go ahead and set an effect toggle key. This just means the keys that you can press to turn a preset on and off. I like to make mine control F2 and then you can set keys to sort of cycle through your presets and I really like doing that too. So for previous preset, I'm going to click in there. I like to make mine shift and the semicolon key and then for the next one, I click in there and I like this one to be the shift and the apostrophe or quotes key, whatever we want to call that. So those are the only ones I like to set. You can go ahead and set the other ones if you want, but these are the ones that I use. So once you have those set, up, click outside of the menu. Okay. Because if you click and you still have it like in the box, that's going to change your key bind. You don't want that. Click outside of this menu. And then whatever you programmed for your overlay key, press that to make sure it works and the menu goes away. So mine is home. So when I press home, it goes away. When I press home again, it comes back. So now let's say I don't want this preset in effect at all. I want to turn it off. Remember I programmed that as control F2. So when I press control F2, it takes it off. You can see it went back to the EAC 
standard. If I want to turn it back on, I do control F2 again and it brings it back. Now let's say I don't really want this one because this one's really bright. Remember I set up the um, previous and next ones. If I do shift and the apostrophe or quotation key or whatever, it cycles to the next one. And yeah, I got a little pop-up that said it's cycling to autumn, whatever that was. I do it again, it goes to the blonde preset. Uh, again, it goes to the boho preset. If I want to go back to the blonde preset, I programmed that to be shift and semicolon key. I press that and it goes back to the previous one. See, this is easy. It really doesn't have to be that hard or intimidating, I promise. Let's say that I want to use a preset that's way down in the list and I don't want to like cycle through all of them. I can just press my home key that brings up my menu. I can click up here and that lists all of my presets. So let's say I want to go all the way down here to the bottom and I want to use, um, I really like uh, radiance. I'm going to highlight that, select it, and then it changes to that for me. Press home key, that menu goes away, and ta-da, I have my beautiful preset. Remember how I said you can easily upgrade your reshade from the DX9 settings to the DX11? If you are doing that, you need to download reshade from the website. Again, the link is in the description. You're gonna scroll down and download reshade 6.3.3. Once you've downloaded that, you're gonna double click to open up the installer. If your Sims 4 game does not show up on on here, you just need to do the usual thing and find where it's installed at. So if you have it installed for DX9 already, this is what you used to do that before. If you're trying to upgrade to DX11, you're gonna choose this one here, the one without DX9 in it. So go ahead and click that and then click open. Go to the next screen. Instead of clicking DX9 like we did before, you're going to choose DX11, click next, and then you should see these options. So you've got options to update reshade only, update reshade and effects or uninstall reshade. What most of you probably want to do if you're upgrading is you want to choose update reshade only. So that's going to update your reshade to be compatible with DX11 and leave your effects that you've already installed unaffected. But if you just want a clean slate, you want to go ahead and upgrade the effects and just reinstall those or maybe install some extra ones, you're going to choose the update reshade and effects. So choose whichever one of those you want. You're going to click next. It'll do whatever you chose it to do. And then you should get a finished screen. I'm not doing that here because I have my Sims game up on my other monitor and I don't want to accidentally corrupt it by uh, messing with these in the middle of it. Well, once you've done that and you've loaded up your game the next time, you should have a little pop up here from Reshade that says Reshade whatever version has been successfully installed. So you know that it was done correctly. And then you use your presets and your key binds just like we did in the previous version. Nothing changed from that. Let me know if you want a list of my favorite presets, I'd be happy to put those in the comments or maybe like, you know, restart my Patreon and start putting some CC mod stuff over there. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.